one of the teachers here at Intrepid English. Welcome to part one of my top ten poetry must-reads. Before we start, there's some vocabulary we need to go through. Endure, verb, remain in existence, last. Fluid, adjective, not settled or stable. Likely or able to change. Toot your own horn. Idiom. Talk boastfully about oneself or one's achievements. Blow your own trumpet. Idiom. To talk about oneself or one's achievements, especially in a way that shows that one is proud or too proud. Summing up. Noun. A restatement of the main points of an argument or case. Hyperbole, noun, exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. Visceral, adjective, relating to deep inward feelings. Melody, noun, a sequence of single notes that is musically satisfying. A tune. Dizzying. Adjective, causing someone to feel amazed. Limited, adjective, restricted in size, amount, or extent. Few, small, or short. Compilation, noun, the action or process of producing something, especially a list or book, by assembling information collected from other sources. I know it's an outrageously big-headed thing to do, to quote oneself, but I was asked by the poetry question to write about the power of poetry for their continuous essay series on the subject, and I wrote back in two thousand and nineteen a piece I still very much agree with. I said, "The power of poetry is its timelessness. Poetry endures. It survives the wars." The natural disasters, the harshness of aging, it survives foolish kings and queens, prime ministers and presidents, czars and popes. It survives dictatorships, genocide, corruption. It survives injustice. It survives cancer. Poetry is everywhere, no matter how much you avoid it. Poetry adapts. Poetry attacks. Poetry breathes. Poetry is fluid. Poetry waits. Poetry travels. Poetry is patient. The power of poetry resides in its inability to be defined. I quote this not, as they say, to toot my own horn or blow my own trumpet, but because it is a good way of summing up my love of poetry. And my excitement, therefore, in sharing some of my favorite collections with you. Most books mentioned below are ones I've read in the past five years. I've recommended poetry books before, in our very own novel writing course, and I can't not mention our novels that changed our lives series, in which teachers and students of intrepid English spoke about the books that shaped them in some way. Book recommendations are among my favorite thing to give. I myself am a poet, and am constantly consuming different voices and deconstructing the construction of language. So, here is the first part of my ten poetry must-reads. Arias by Sharon Olds. Where has Sharon Olds been all my life, or rather, where have I been, as Olds has been writing book after book? To date, Olds has published over ten books of poetry and has won numerous awards, including the prestigious Pulitzer Prize in Poetry. Arias, published in two thousand and nineteen by Jonathan Cape, is one of those books where the language is so clear you can't help but nod along in agreement. Or, in other cases, the poem is something you have felt but never been able to express. Olds has a handle on her language, a fierce control that is both stunning. And bewitching, the New Testament by Jericho Brown. Over lockdown, I found Jericho Brown. 
and it made my lockdown all the more better for it. And forgive the hyperbole, but it has made my life all the better for it. The New Testament, published in 2018 by Picador Poetry, is a conversation about race, sexuality, and America. A blistering, devastating book that I couldn't not finish in one sitting. It's that good. The book holds you, demands you stay, because where else would you go? Brown has also won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, among many other awards, and has wildly published. His voice is unlike other poets writing today, for here is a blend of intimacy and brutality, the personal and the country. Claudia Rankin said it best when she wrote, to read Jericho Brown's poems is to encounter devastating genius. Eternity by Tracy K. Smith I spent my weekend listening to Tracy K. Smith read her books. It made for such joyful and inquisitive time. Smith has the ability to say the most profound things with a neat melody of language that is always relating to nature in some way. Smith said that she starts each poem with a question or a thought and explores that with the senses on offer. Those most powerful to her are sight and smell. Visceral is the word I would use to describe Smith's work. Eternity, published in 2019 by Penguin, is a good introduction to the world of Tracy K. Smith, and I would highly, highly recommend it. Hi, I'm Tom, and I'm one of the teachers here at Intrepid English. You may already be familiar with the courses we have on our website, but now you can listen to them all. Our new and exciting audio courses allow you to learn whilst you're on the move. Read by myself and my fellow Intrepid English colleagues, you will hear a wide range of accents whilst being given tips, encouragement and knowledge. Come in soon, wherever you get your podcasts. Vertigo and Ghost by Fiona Benson The story of Leader and the Swan is one writers have returned to and reworked time and time again. Benson's Vertigo and Ghost, published in 2019 by Jonathan Cape, is a welcome addition to these reworkings. In the first section of the book, Benson brings this story into the 21st century, showing us that Leda is not a thing of the past, but indeed part of our present. What makes Zeus different from, say, Brock Turner, Harvey Weinstein, or Ted Bundy? Not much. I Must Be Living Twice New and Selected Poems 1975-2014 to by Eileen Miles When I think about the poet that inspires me, or makes me feel like a poet, it's Eileen Miles. Their work has been wildly praised, published and reviewed. They were even the inspiration for a character in Jill Soloway's Transparent, where their poetry sprang off the screen and into dizzying dance sequences. It is sheer joy. Miles gives us all the gift of poetry, reminds us that it is not something elite or limited, it is based on hard work, but this starts with expression, thought, and intrigue. I Must Be Living Twice, published in 2018 by Profile Books, is a compilation of Miles's work, spanning over three decades. In this volume, you will witness how a poet advances in their career, growing stronger with each poem. I'd recommend beginning with the poem Peanut Butter. Well, this is just part one of my top ten poetry recommendations, and I hope you found something you're interested in. Stay tuned for part two, where I will discuss books by poets Donica Kelly, Danes Smith, among others. If you enjoyed this podcast, why not book a free trial lesson today and talk about your English goals with an experienced and friendly English teacher. I'm Tom, and I'm one of the teachers here at Intrepid English. Thanks for listening.